everyone. So sometimes I dig through my junk and find um, little areas of deficit where I haven't posted anything. I mean, there's huge areas of deficit, let's be honest. But this is me graphing with a TI-84 plus calculator. I'm just doing linear inequalities. The big deal is that in some situations you can use this really nice extraneous program that does inequalities. You just run it as an app on your, um, let's see where it says apps here. It's an application that just runs right on your um, calculator and allows you to graph really nicely. I'm just going to use the stock software that comes with it just because of the fact that in some situations you're not allowed to add that app onto your calculator because a test prevents it or your teacher prevents it or whatever it happens to be. So uh, the big difference is with the the application you're allowed to do the shading and the dotted lines whereas with the stock app, you, uh, the stock software, you really can't do both a dotted line and shading at the same time. So it's easier just to make a little note to yourself um, about the dotted versus solid and then shade. So in this case, I would look here and see, okay, well, it's greater than or equal to, because y is next to the big end. That's a huge deal, whether it's next to the big end or the little end. If I were to measure this distance is quite a bit bigger than nothing. So that would make sure that this side over here is, if y is e on this side or next to this side, it's greater than. Think of it as a symbolic situation as opposed to like the arrow points because that only solves one problem and creates a bunch of others because you lose perspective. But anyway, because it's and equal to, it means that it's a solid line. So I'm going to make a note to myself that it's a solid line. The benefit in this problem is two of them are eliminated. So I'm really only dealing with the C and D, and you should be able to tell based on the slope what it is, but that's not the purpose of this lesson, so let's just go ahead and graph it. So I turn it on, and my suggestion, and you could just ignore this su suggestion if you want, is to go ahead and prime the window to give you exactly what you're supposed to be looking for. Uh, naturally, your window will come with an X maximum and X minimum of negative 10 and 10, but my suggestion, and you can, like I said, ignore it if you want, is to just make small adjustments in the window before you even graph, then it'll look exactly like it's supposed to. That way you don't have those, well, if it's a multiple choice test, for instance, sometimes picking between two that look alike is a little bit wonky, and then even when you have to hand draw them, if you use it as a test, sometimes depending on the window, it's hard to see. So my x goes from negative 6 to 6, as does my y in this case. So I'm just going to go ahead and change my x maximum and x minimum to negative 6 for my x minimum, x max is 6. x scale means it goes up by 1, but mine go up by 2. So I might change that. That way I know exactly where things are. Uh, y is the same way, so negative 6 and 6, and I can change the y scale as well. And that's all I really need to change to make it look really nice in terms of exactly what I want. So now I'm ready to do 3 fifth x minus 4. Since I'm using a TI-84+, plus, I'm ready to graph now because y is already by itself. Once y is by itself, you're ready to graph. And the cool thing is I can go ahead and put the 3 fifths in there. I'm going to hit the alpha button and the y equals and bring up the menu. There's a bunch of ways to get fractions, but if you hit the green button here and the y equals, it'll bring up the fraction menu. So n over d is a fraction. And then just click to the right so you don't get trapped in it. And then pick your variable, minus 4. Now, the big deal is I need to shade it so it will graph. Or I need to set it up so it'll shade. It'll graph anyway. Um, and like I said, y is greater than. And what you get over here is you either get a shade that looks like this, and I'll show you that. So basically you click over until you get in front of the Y, and it has like this windshield wiper effect. Hit enter a couple times. That's greater than. In fact, if you could tilt your screen on your, cal or tilt your calculator, it'll actually look a little bit like this. See, it has that feel to it. So that's your greater than. Your less than, incidentally enough, looks like this. So we always called it halves of a sandwich when I was working in the brick and mortar classroom a lot. So there's that. Um, so in this case, I'm greater than. So this shows shade up. And now I'm ready to graph. So I'm just going to graph it. And I should be looking for something with a solid line. And there it is, right there. It matches almost exactly. You know, pretty good representation of what I wanted it to be. So that's, the f that's one of them. And I'll just do a few more. Nothing serious. Um, I may just make points about them. In this case, 
uh, you can the windows the same so it's not like it's that big of a deal to worry about um, it's a solid line so I can eliminate C so I don't need to worry about C as much I'm going to turn on my question numbers to remind myself where I am in this case you just type in negative 5x for my incoming part or for my equation now this is a dotted line there's no or equal to parts so I need to note to myself that it's a dotted line so this and this are out so I'm left with these two now you should you could tell based on the slope here what the answer is but in order to graph less than because it's next to the little end so less usually when I do these on paper I'll make a note of less versus greater right here and then dotted versus solid over here and that way I can graph them exactly like I want them and they match pretty much one for one with what I'm gonna get so this is a less than I need to hit enter three times and get less than now it's ready to graph if you miss like you're trying to get less than and you miss it and you go past it you kinda just have to go around the horn you have to keep hitting enter until you see it again it's like I think there's five different things set up there might be wrong about that part but so it's a dotted line it has this shape and shade so it's C you know no big deal well what happens if it's not like this what if it's in standard form or some other annoying thing well here's some annoying thing so before I can start making any decisions about anything other than you know dotted versus solid which I can do right now it's a dotted line that won't change but whether it's greater than less than depends on what happens when I work this out so I need to work this out first so 6x plus 5y is greater than negative 5. And by work it out, I mean convert into slope intercept form. Get y by itself. The calculator doesn't automatically graph standard form. So minus 6x, those cancel, and you're just bringing this down. Now, times 5y, y oh, is still not by itself, so I need to get rid of times 5. Everything needs to be divided by 5. I always circled this part. It's positive, so I don't need to flip this over. It stays like it is. Now I'm ready to graph. Now that I've done all that work, once again, my window's looking good. It matches. See? Perfectly fine. And then I'm ready to go in and do my window. So I can clear all this out. Um, negative 6 over 5 Oh, by the way, if you're going to use the fraction setup, make sure that you click out of it before you start typing. Otherwise, everything ends up in the denominator, and it's really annoying. I hated that when I used to do it. And by used to, I mean like last time I tried to do it. So in this case, y is next to the big n, so this is y is greater. So I need to hit enter twice, and that's my greater sign with my little windshield wiper right there. And now I'm just ready to graph it. I'm looking for something with the dotted line. And really, if I had thought about it, this question is much easier than I even imagined because only one of them is dotted. So there you go. You may have seen that. But I'm, I'm really just showing method more than solution to that type of question. One more. This is a good example. So in this one, 6x minus y is less than or equal to negative 1. I can make a note to myself that it's solid which makes this question really easy but once again it's about method more than anything else um, I need to get y by itself so 6x is on the same side just because there's a minus here doesn't mean you to get rid of 6x you add the minus only applies to the variable that it's in front of it doesn't apply here so this is really plus 6x because it's positive 6 so to get rid of plus 6x you need to subtract that's a really common mistake so I thought I'd throw that in there Uh, y still not by itself. There's technically a negative 1 here, so I'm going to divide by negative 1. And I'm going to circle it. Anytime you multiply or divide an inequality, if you if the thing, uh, if the coefficient on the variable, which is the number in front of the letter you're trying to, you're actually worried about, changes from positive to negative like it will here, if you divide by negative, you need to flip this over. I think I have a video about that somewhere. It's just about perspective, really. So negative 6 divided by negative 1 is 6, and negative 1 divided by negative 1 is plus 1. So I end up with this, but the big deal here is I had to flip this over because I divided by a negative. I changed sort of direction in a way, so it changed the way that I perceived things. If you 
drive north on a street, the, something on the left side of the street will be on the right side if you're driving south. So that's really why it works the way that it does. Anyway, it used to be less than in the original problem, but it's actually greater than once I get into slope intercept form. So you can go ahead and set it up. See, I missed. I have to go all the way around. That's what I get for talking. There it is. 6x six six plus 1. So this shows it's greater than. I hit the graph. It should look significantly like this since it's the only possible answer. And there it is. So that's how you graph T, uh, on a T84 plus without uh, the application that you can get for inequalities um, if you need to do linear inequalities at any time. So I hope this helps.